Welcome back to Echo Ridge, where we've got a mess on our hands. The too long didn't read is, I messed up. You know how, at the end of every episode, I sort of let it run in the background? While we usually do some credits or things like that? Well, I think this time it's cost us. Long story short, as much as I am pressing it, we still don't have the hatch being groomed yet, and it's almost cycle 15. Well, this doesn't seem like a big deal. It's only cycle 15. Ah, uh, yes. Unfortunately, when going for the carnivore achievement on max difficulty, your timings are very, very tight. And now that Eilart's finished the research, we have access to the grooming station and the critter drop-off, so I'm going to be able to show you why. Let's put an emergency on these. Sulfur's being a pal and picking up the hatch now. And the little buddy is being groomed for the very first time. And this starts a countdown. Now it's going to take about two cycles for Susan here to become tame. Once they are tame, we'll get a good look at their reproduction rate, and I'll be able to explain to you why we've already kind of lost the carnivore achievement. Susan is now tame. And you can see their reproduction is at 75%, which basically means it's going to be about two more cycles before Susan here lays an egg. Let me explain why that's the bad news. Sometime around cycle 19, Susan's going to lay an egg. If we took that egg immediately and put it in an incubator, it would hatch four cycles later. This puts us at cycle 23. Once it hatched, we would take the critter out of the incubator and put it right back into the stable, where we would then have to wait five more cycles for that hatch to grow up into an adult. We're now at cycle 28. And then, at cycle 28, we're then going to have to wait 5.88 cycles before that hatch laid an egg, which puts us at around cycle 35. Yes, Susan here would have laid another egg in the meantime, but the cycle I want you to remember is the cycle 35 when it's the first opportunity that we have two reproducing hatches, because then it's just a matter of compound hatch math. Those two hatches would then become four hatches once their new eggs hatched and then became adults themselves at around cycle 45. We add in about 11 more cycles and those four hatches become eight around cycle 56. The eight become 16 at 67 and the 16 become 32 around cycle 78. Now the 32 hatches is pretty important. Why? Because that's how many hatches it would take to fill four stables which would be the minimum we would need to feed 10 dupes 20,000 calories per cycle in order to make carnivore achievement by cycle 100. Unfortunately, at cycle 78, we would still have baby hatches in those stables because we would have to wait five more cycles, which puts us around cycle 83. And as you can imagine, that pushes it right to the wire. Well, Echo, what about the pips? We could also start grooming the pips and get some barbecue out of them. Although they only give you half the amount of meat that our hatch does. So our efforts are much better off concentrating on Susan here. As you can see by the evidence of the magma here, we've revealed pretty much every biome on this planetoid. The only other critter that naturally appears is the wonderful poke shell. And these poke shells don't give you any meat. We could turn those poke shells into sandy shells by dropping them in water, but then unfortunately we have nothing to feed them. Because there's no slime, and we just won't have enough polluted dirt and rot pile to go around. Well Echo, what about on the other planetoid? And that's also a possibility, because even though this planetoid is the sort of flipped asteroid, it still has a sandstone biome, which there would be a couple more hatches there. Unfortunately, by the time we got over there, found the supply teleporter input on that planetoid, activated it, and then started sending some of those eggs over, we would still be a little bit behind the power curve. We have no fish, or we could start running them, although I'm not 100% sure that seafood counts as critter meat. You would think it does, right? The long and short of it is, I don't know if I could make the carnivore achievement happen with how casual that I started the colony off with. Especially considering I let it roll a few cycles for the purposes of end credits, like a giant dum-dum. Well, no big deal, right? Just load up an autosave and start from that point. Yeah, about that. When I loaded up the game to get ready to start episode two, I realized that 
about four cycles had gone by. Needs to say, I was pretty upset with myself. So in an effort to see how much damage I actually did, I played the game to a cycle 100 to see if it was still going to be possible based on how slow we were to get around to Susan. We came up a little shy. I was like, okay, no big deal. Let me just reload into an autosave prior to that. Well, unfortunately, it only keeps a handful of your prior autosaves. So my only available save game to go back to was right back at cycle 13, where I had done a save as, or at the colony start at cycle 1. But I think we're going to take the opportunity to restart it anyways, except this time I'm also going to turn the care packages back on. In my multiple attempts up to cycle 100, as I was trying to channel my inner Doctor Strange, finding that one permutation that allows us to get to the carnivore achievement, I realized playing without care packages is just downright mean. At the minimum, it's going to allow us to see what happens when I actually play the game a little sweaty this time and see how much faster we can get the colony set up and ready to start ranching Susan. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these coordinates right to the clipboard and head back to the main menu. With the same seed inputted, we turned care packages back on because I'm tired of being a masochist. Apparently it changes the overall coordinates a little bit, so I'll make sure I update those. And now we can start the game once again. We went with the same digger, researcher, and rancher. The only difference, in keeping with the tryhard nature of our restart, we took a suggestion from the comments and made our rancher start with Critter Ranching 1. And I know the decision to restart is going to be, let's say, controversial. But I hope you understand the reasons behind it. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Whether we should have just ran through it knowing that we probably wouldn't have gotten the carnivore achievement. Or do you like the fact that we restarted? At a minimum, I get bonus points for transparency, right? Now being there was a slight change in the coordinates because we turned on care packages, I've re-uploaded the Colony 1 save start and the coordinates to the Discord. I'm actually kind of excited to get to compare and contrast the two different starts. My first goal is going to be to get research online a lot quicker. If you remember the first time, it was almost cycle three before we got the research station down. Well, here we go again. There's new Susan. Hi, new Susan. I hope your reproduction rates are a little bit better than your cousins. Oh, dear goodness. This Susan is age 70. I tell you what, sometimes I feel like I can't buy a bucket. Three quarters of the way to cycle one, we had managed to get all the way up to the water pool and install the pitcher pump. And research is going down. Already, this is a monumental difference compared to our last start. Bathrooms are going in, but I don't know if they're going to have enough time to fill the wash basin. We're nearing the end of cycle one. No big deal. It's just germs, right? Never mind. Here comes Patrick with the water bottle now. Thank you for tryharding with me, Patrick. So what's the difference so far? It's very incremental, but long story short, it's due to the speeds. In the first run, I probably was a bit too comfortable and just kept fast forwarding it through things, which meant there was a higher chance for the duplicates to be idle, not to mention a much more deliberate playstyle and building everything with 100% purpose. I can fast forward it when they sleep, right? Uh, better not. Speaking of which, I've set up the new priorities and I think I'm going to go with two duplicates per schedule, at least to start off with. This means we'll be able to run with fewer bathrooms, so let's let Patrick sleep in a little bit, shall we? Oh yeah, not today. Thank you, Mr. DK Oz. But those potties, they're staying dirty. The research table is in, although it's not quite powered yet. Think this time we're going to start off with jumbo battery first to save more time from having to fill the small battery over and over again. Eilart's obviously flexing because they just finished the first piece of research in the middle of cycle two. Once again, compared to the last try, we didn't even start on research until cycle three or four. Still in cycle two, our second piece of research is already finished, and that's basic farming. We're heading into meal prep to be able to grab the mess tables. Then we'll take a sideline for advanced research so we can grab the supercomputer. And then we'll head right into ranching and animal control. There's going to be one bottleneck in that process, though, because we have to wait for Eilart to get their first skill point so they can learn advanced research to use the supercomputer. Until then, we won't be able to conduct the advanced research that ranching and animal control require. Beginning of cycle three, mess table research is just completed. 
And good timing, too, because Mr. DK Oz is hard at work building the future Great Hall. Just like in the last run, though, we're hurting on metal ore. It's out there. We just have to go look for it. Eilart is finishing up on the research for advanced research. Unfortunately, they're still 1,300 skill points away from being able to use the supercomputer. But I want you to once again compare. We've now knocked out one, two, three, four, five researches in about the same amount of time that it took us to get the research station in our first playthrough. Tell you what, I need to play sweaty more often. Since we can only do novice research, for the time being, I think we're going to grab the flower pot and then follow it up for some things that we're going to eventually need for our spawn, such as ventilation and plumbing. Right on cue, the printing pot does light up, and as you can see, we do have the care packages enabled. I know, I know, but look, we might be able to get a spare hatch from it, maybe some extra food. A little bit of peace of mind goes a long way. We're going to be keeping our eyes out for strong ranchers. To start off with, though, we're going to need a cook. But considering there's no cook amongst these, I think we're going to grab this May. Their only negative is they're biohazardous, but they do have some nice tidying and operating. Quite frankly, we just need the duplicate labor. So sorry, Sulphur, you're not going to be a rancher this time. We're going to end up putting the ration boxes. It's just so convenient to be able to throw them down where there's already a bunch of carbon dioxide. Helps keep that food fresh even though we don't have a lot of it. It'll also be fairly close to the mess hall. Speaking of which, we need to disable that water cooler immediately. It'll be full of water. The dupes will just have to stare at it. It makes me wonder, should we waste a skill point by putting Sulphur Star into advanced research? The plus two to science would help him level up quicker and we could already get starting on ranching research. Eilart is still a thousand experience away. What to do, what to do. I've been staring at this screen for a couple minutes, and I suppose this is one of the downsides to try hard sweaty play, as I can't decide what would be better. The positive is we'd start on the research sooner. The negative is we'd be putting sulfur into a skill that they have no interest in. Okay, we're gonna go with the improved tinkering. We could have gone advanced research, but quite frankly, there's still a lot of novice research that we can spend our time with that'll still end up saving us time in the future, whether it be the rock crusher, the electrolyzers, the bathrooms. So I think we're okay. I suppose this does beg the question, how long is it gonna be until we have over 150,000 calories? I don't think we need the second ration box. And look at that, a beautiful cycle three great hall. Oh my goodness. This is exactly how it happens. We have two idle dupes. Shame, for shame. Here in cycle five, we actually have Eilart starting on ranching, even though they can't do the supercomputer work quite yet but they are very close. So sometime in the middle of them researching the novice research for ranching, they're going to skill up and they'll be able to flip right over to the supercomputer. And we just went through cycle five. Mr. DK Oz was right behind Eilart and the skilling up and they will earn their hard digging hat. Here it is the beginning of cycle six and we just unlocked the grooming station. We're going to kick up the priority just to emphasize the point of how much faster we're going to be able to get to Ranching Susan compared to the last run. I mean, that's a savings of almost 10 cycles. And when you start compounding that hatch math, you can see what a difference it'll be. We'll be able to do that math just as soon as Susan is tame. I forgot since Patrick starts with Critter Ranching 1, we can give them their hat too. Everybody gets hats now. Hurry up, let's not make a big production out of it. In the bag you go, Susan. And there we go, halfway through cycle six, Susan is getting their teeth brushed for the very first time. Our cycle six printing pot is up and you know I'm a sucker for a Steve. Now this Steve is not the greatest because they have the noodle arms, but they also have supplying and the strength with supplying will sort of offset the noodle arms. Plus, we get a cook out of the deal. Welcome back to duplicate number five, Eric W. Now there's not a whole lot of cooking yet, but we're about to change that. After all, we already have the electric grill and I think this will be a good spot for it. It's right next to the ration box. We already have a power line conveniently located. We just gotta move some plants out of the way. And since we're gonna start ranching, we might as well start ranching pips as well. It doesn't take the rancher too long, especially when there's already a couple of arbitries here. So the pips are gonna be able to feed themselves. Now, like I was saying earlier, the pips aren't gonna be that valuable in terms of critter meat but they might help fend off some starvation at around the 15 to 25 cycle mark. Oh my goodness, it's even better than we thought. Susan just laid their first egg and they're still wild, which means we could actually throw this into an incubator 
immediately. We just so happen to be researching animal control now. So as soon as it's done, we'll need to start building incubators. Of course, that also means we're going to need to put the rock crusher down and get some refined metal too. We finished the electric grill. Not that it's going to do us a whole bunch, because the only pickled meal we can make is off the natural meal lice that's already planted, and there's not a lot of it. Where it will come in handy is when we start getting into mush bars, and we'll take all those mush bars and turn them into mush fry. And just like that, in the middle of cycle 7, we've completed animal control. Now that that's out of the way, we really need to start worrying about oxygen. Well, not worrying about it, because we're doing pretty good as far as the timeline. And here we are. Susan is now tame. They had just laid an egg, so it's going to be a little while, about 5.88 cycles, before they lay their next egg. But this hatchling egg is already here. So as soon as we get done creating some beautiful aluminum, we're going to be able to put down an incubator. Four cycles after that, so let's hypothetically say cycle 13, that hatch will be delivered to this stable. And then five cycles after that, it'll turn into an adult and start laying eggs of its own. Needless to say, this is a large difference from where we were in cycle 8 on the last playthrough. Hence the reason why we needed to start over. So what did I learn? Well, when I'm doing a series like this, I need to go ahead and uninstall that speed mod. Additionally, don't spend too much time sitting here running my mouth and not paying attention to the game. I'm going to keep a much closer eye on it in the future. I hope you've enjoyed the contrasting of the two different starts. I think this is going to give us a real opportunity to knock that carnivore achievement out, even under some dire conditions on this horrible, horrible planetoid. So until next time, happy gaming, and I'll talk to you soon.